So let me just add a couple of comments about target date funds, because I do talk about them at some length, kind of about the whole idea of balance, rebalancing, uh, steady balance throughout your life. In the uh, last two chapters of, of the book that I guess just about everybody here owns, and the new, the new book. So this isn't a plug for the book, because you already got it. <laughs> uh, but um, it is not at all clear that there is a better strategy. Is a target date fund based on your age and retirement date uh, a better investment than, let's say, you deciding that you want to be in a life strategy fund at one level of risk or another. It's not, not at all clear that being in a balanced index fund, which we started back in 1992 or three, which is just straight 60-40 for all investors all the time, it's not clear that target date funds will give you better returns than that. We just don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, there is no guaranteed success and, uh, in this business. You, you just take your chances. And so I, I conclude in the book uh, that uh, talking about asset allocation, how a lot of it is very intuitive. Uh, I'm not so sure we need to go to, you know, go from 60.1 back to 60 to rebalance. And I'm not even sure that you have to go from 70 to 60. But maybe when you get to 80, you should go back to 65 or something like that. I just don't know. It all depends. There's no rule that is going to get you through there. And uh, then you have to take into account when you look at history, that bonds used to yield a lot more than stocks. And uh, that was a good reason. So you, you come to your retirement and you want more income. Most, not everybody does, but most people do. And so you've got a, a much bigger portion in bonds that will pay you income. And that's one of the principles of the target date funds. But it isn't the case anymore. And you know, I'm using a future return. Well, let's talk about yield. I'm using a yield on bonds of about 3% for the next 10 years. And that's just based on a very simple uh, division of your bondholders into uh, 10-year uh, treasury notes, yielding about 2.2 percent, and uh, and a, a, a corporate bond fund yielding about, I think, about 4 percent. And you end up with a 3 percent return. And uh, so that's pretty much what you're going to get, not the old 8, not the old 9, not the 15 that we got in Paul Volcker's era. Imagine that, 15 percent. I mean, shooting fish in a barrel. If you'd bought a zero-coupon treasury, nothing would have been better. So I think we can say safely that it would be very hard to talk about the bond market and say that in the future nothing could possibly be better than a 3% return. I don't believe that. So it's, it, it's very much intuitive. Uh, I think, I almost hate to say this, but people should relax a little bit about the precision of all this or about the certainty of all this. There's no certainty in investing. And uh, I, I had this letter that, that is in the book. And I wrote to a young man who was worried about um, all the problems in the world, and he was trying to set his asset allocation. And uh, so, you know, I said to him, you know, you know sir, young man, um, just as much about whether we're going to have a nuclear war as I do, or as anybody does. You know just as much about whether global trade is going to completely crash, which is kind of in the cards, but it may happen and it may not. You know as much about the, the effects of, of glo global warming, or as we're now supposed to call it, climate change, as, as anybody. Make your judgment about that. And I can't help you with that. And, you know, racial divisions in the country, gap between the rich and the poor, how is that going to be reconciled? Nobody knows the answers to that, and yet that's an important part of what the market will hold in the future. So I said, as for me, my, I'm invested 50% in stocks, stock index funds, and 50% in bonds, either our munis in my personal account or, or my um, or corporate indexes or, or um, uh, total, not so much total bond market indexes, uh, intermediate term in length. And, uh, so, and I spend half, I said 50-50, and I spend half of the time worrying about why I have so much in stocks and the other <laughs> half of the time worrying about why I have so little. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call that the investor's dilemma. And I, I think from that applause, for which I thank you, I think everybody is in the, is in the room, as I said, that said, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs>